We left off here looking at uh, this intermediary step between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle. And this is called the linking step. Now the linking step occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. And if you remember the mitochondria, it's one of our organelles. It's really important in terms of ATP production. And this is where ATP is made. So this is simply the powerhouse of the cell. So in the matrix of the mitochondria of this organelle, we find the linking step. Remember glycolysis we talked about earlier, that occurs in the cytosol. So two different locations within the cell. Um, the linking step is where we take the products from glycolysis, which is pyruvate. We know that the end of glycolysis made us two pyruvate uh, per molecule of glucose. And so we're gonna shuttle this pyruvate into the mitochondria, across into the matrix. Uh, this is the structure of pyruvate at this point. And with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase, we're going to make acetyl-CoA. We're gonna input CoA, which is sort of a coenzyme here. We've talked about coenzymes and cofactors and how they help uh, enzymes behave or help enzymes achieve their, um, their role. And so that is what CoA is doing here. And the end result is acetyl-CoA. Now, what do we make in the process of that? First off, we make CO2 as a byproduct, but we also are going to generate some more electrons. We spoke about this earlier in glycolysis. The um, reduced form of electrons, which is where we have our carriers, NAD, um, now having additional electrons. And the purpose of those electrons is going to become clear when we get to the very last stage of cellular respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. So you can see the arrow showing us here that more electrons are being generated and they're gonna be very, very important when we get to oxidative phosphorylation with the electron transport chain. So we've generated some electrons in glycolysis, we've generated some electrons here, and I want you to kind of stick those in mind. Those are going to become important when we look at them later. Now we're going to take this acetyl-CoA, which is the product of the linking step, and we're going to shuttle that to the next stage, which is the Krebs cycle. And that is where we're going to also continue to generate more electrons, as well as a smaller amount of ATP. So let's look at the second major step of cellular respiration, which is the Krebs cycle. Again, this is sometimes called the citric acid cycle, the TCA cycle, and it is a cyclical series of metabolic uh, pathways. It's a cyclical set of enzymatic reactions, very similar to glycolysis, but the major substrate is the major product, right? We have a cyclical um, sort of loop to, this, to these processes. This is also occurring in the mitochondria. So again, we want to think about the location and how that differs. We produce ATP here. Again, a small amount, but some ATP is made, unlike what we just saw with the linking step. In the linking step, we make some electrons, but we do not generate any ATP. We're going to reduce coenzymes, right? So we're going to have NADH in the reduced form with H+, means that we're now carrying electrons from the oxidized form on this side. So oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction, gain of electrons. So again, our NAD being one of our nucleotide uh, biomolecules is functioning to shuttle electrons around as we've discussed before. Same thing with FAD. FAD is another type of electron carrier. Here it is in the oxidized form. And then here it is reduced, now carrying electrons as well. So we have three NADH plus and one FADH2. We also are going to generate some CO2 as a byproduct and then one ATP per acetyl-CoA. Now, if we're thinking about this along the way, one glucose gave us two pyruvate. Each of those pyruvate gave us one acetyl-CoA. So by this point of the cycle, we have two acetyl-CoA per molecule of glucose. So in this stage, we generate two ATP in actuality. So we have generated two net ATP in glycolysis. Remember, we had to invest two, and then we yielded four. So that's only two net. We're going to generate one 
ATP per acetyl-CoA in this stage. So that is going to be two total. So far, we've generated four net ATP per molecule of glucose. And when we talk about the overall number of ATP made, that four is going to be the four that we make by substrate level phosphorylation. And the bulk of it, the rest of it, is going to be made by oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, really important. So just to go over that here at the bottom again, our major products are one ATP per acetyl-CoA. We now have three electrons being shuttled uh, by NAD, NADH+, and then one electron being shuttled by FADH2, okay? And then we have two CO2 as a byproduct here. So this is what the enzymatic reactions or the steps of the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle look like. We insert acetyl-CoA. So we start off with acetyl-CoA as the major substrate. We have several different enzymes and substrates along the way. And notice at several points, we yield our major byproducts. So CO2 at stage three and stage four here, ATP. So we phosphorylate ADP by substrate level phosphorylation at stage five, we have FADH2 at stage six, NADH plus at stage eight, and then we end up back to our original uh, substrate being acetyl-CoA. Again, I don't need you to memorize the details, the enzymes, the reactants. I do need you to know what are the major byproducts that are generated. Right. So now we're gonna get to the fourth or the third some people consider the linking step as a stage. Some people don't. So they can be three to four, depending on what literature you look at. But the last stage of cellular respiration is oxidative phosphorylation. So in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we made four net ATP. The majority of our ATP is going to be made by this last step, which is the electron transport chain. And the way that we phosphorylate here in the electron transport chain is oxidative. So that means we need oxygen in order to make this amount uh, and to make ATP here at this stage. The way that this is done is by moving the electrons. This is why it's so important to think about all the electrons that we've been generating. Some in glycolysis, some in the uh, linking steps, some in the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle. And those are being made for a very specific purpose. And they're gonna be shuttled off to the mitochondria and they're gonna move down an electron transport chain. And that energy, the energy that we take passing those electrons from one complex to the other is the energy that we use to make ATP uh, in the electron transport chain. Now, again, the caveat here is that this requires an, uh, oxygen. This cannot be done anaerobically the way that we can for glycolysis or even for the Krebs cycle. This requires oxygen. Let's describe what's happening in the electron transport chain. So there's a chain of molecules that are inserted in the inner mitochondrial matrix. If you remember the uh, structure of the mitochondria, there's the matrix, which is inside the sort of central area of the mitochondria. There is the inner mitochondrial matrix and then the outer mitochondrial matrix and then the membrane of the matrix. So in that inner mitochondrial matrix, which is the inner membrane, we have some complexes that are inserted. And when we have molecules that are being uh, going from oxidation to reduced, they're going from high to low energy, and so we're passing those electrons from one molecule to the next. As we're doing that, we're generating a gradient, right? We're going to illustrate this here in just a minute. But that gradient is how we use the energy, harness the energy, and we phosphorylate uh, 34 ATP. So again, much more in terms of the number of ATP. And we need oxygen. The function of oxygen here is to be the final electron acceptor. So as we're passing these electrons one to the next, something has got to be there to, to sort of take the electrons at the very end of the chain, keep the chain moving, and then we can harness that energy and make ATP. 
Now the molecule, not molecule, excuse me, the enzyme that is actually doing the generation or the synthesis of ATP here is ATP synthase. Okay, so the key takeaway points, oxidative phosphorylation, which means we need oxygen, much more ATP generated here. ATP synthase is the enzyme that's using, that we're using to make the ATP. And the mechanism of making ATP here is different. It's oxidative phosphorylation as opposed to substrate level phosphorylation, which is how we make ATP in the Krebs cycle and glycolysis. So here are the electrons that we have been collecting from the other stages that we've talked about, right? We're taking all those electrons, 10 in total from NAD, two in total from FAD, per molecule of glucose. And those are coming from the uh, preliminary steps, so glycolysis, the linking step, the Krebs cycle. And so they're gonna now be shuttled off to the mitochondrial matrix to participate in this transport chain. We're also going to need oxygen. So six molecules of oxygen will be inserted here. And uh, the end result is we're gonna go from the reduced form, which is where we're carrying electrons, back to our oxidized form where we've sort of taken those electrons off, passed them through our chain, and so our carriers are generally are sort of um our carriers are going to be returned to their reduced form, excuse me, their oxidated form where they're no longer carrying those electrons, right? They've done their job, they've shuttled them off to the mitochondrial matrix, and now they've handed them off to the complex, and now they're back in their oxidized form. We also generate some water as a byproduct. Again, we're gonna take the oxygen, um, use it to be the final electron acceptor, and then water is gonna be generated as a byproduct as we make this ATP. I do wanna point out the range here. So some literature will say that we make 32 total ATP per molecule of glucose. Other literature will say that we make 38. For our purposes, we're gonna go with 38, right? That's what's in, um, most of the literature that we've looked at, that's what's in most of the slides here. But some of the images like this one here at the bottom says 28, but we're gonna go with 38 ATP, okay? So instead of 32, we're gonna go with 38. And so out of the total 38, 34 of that is gonna come from the electron transport chain. And only four of those will come from these preliminary steps.